Well, good morning. We're glad that you're here, and also to those of you who are watching us online. I'm so proud of the church at Argyle. We are excited about our new parking lot. <clears throat> and we will be smelling asphalt very soon. And the work of replacing our parking lot begins on May the 20th, just a few weeks away. And it's a much needed improvement. This will say to our community that we care about this place and also keep people safe as they worship here at Argyle. So thank you, and it's your generosity that makes it all possible. A study through the Gospel of Luke, part 96. Our text today is Luke 24, 13 through 32. If you want to follow along in your Bible or your electronic device. The Emmaus Disciples, Luke 24, 13. Now that same day, two of them were on their way to a village called Emmaus, which was about seven miles from Jerusalem. And together they were discussing everything that had taken place. And while they were discussing and arguing... Jesus himself came near and began to walk along with them. But they were prevented from recognizing him. Then he asked them, What is this dispute that you're having with each other as you're walking? And they stopped walking and looked discouraged. The one named Cleopas answered him, Are you the only visitor in Jerusalem who doesn't know the things that have happened there in these days? What things? He asked them. So they said to him, The things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, powerful in action and speech before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we were hoping that he was the one, the one who was about to redeem Israel. Besides all this, it's the third day since these things happened. Moreover, some women from our group astounded us. They arrived early at the tomb, and when they didn't find his body, they came and reported that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. And some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they didn't see him. He said to them, how foolish you are and how slow to believe all the things the prophets have spoken. Wasn't it necessary for the Messiah to suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted for them the things concerning himself in all the scriptures. And they came near the village where they were going. And he gave the impression that he was going farther. But they urged him, stay with us. Because it's almost evening and now the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it was as he reclined at the table with them. That he took the bread, blessed and broke it. And gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened. And they recognized him. But he disappeared from their sight. They said to each other, weren't our hearts burning within us while he was talking with us on the road and explaining the scriptures to us? In our study last week, Peter heard the news from the women that the tomb was open and that Jesus was gone. And so Peter ran to the tomb to see for himself. And he looked inside the tomb and he saw the grave clothes. And if grave robbers had taken Jesus, why would they leave the grave clothes? It didn't make sense. So everyone is amazed that Jesus is gone. But for some reason, no one put it all together. That everything that is happening is exactly like Jesus said it would happen. Our Christian faith is founded on the scriptures. Everything we need to know about God, everything we need to know about how to live the Christian life is contained in the Scriptures. Everything that is happening on that Sunday is exactly what God said would happen. 
And it was all predicted in the scriptures hundreds of years before it took place. Jesus is who he claims to be. And he will do everything he said he would do. Verse 13. Now that same day. Well, it's Sunday. First day of the week. It's also the very first Easter. And it's late in the day. And the news of the empty tomb is beginning to spread. Friday's long gone. And Sunday is finally here. Now that same day, two of them were on their way. There are 12 apostles, but there are many disciples. And these are two of Jesus' disciples who are not apostles. Now that same day, two of them were on their way to a village called Emmaus, which was about seven miles from Jerusalem. The two disciples are on their way home to Emmaus. Scripture doesn't tell us much about Emmaus, just that it's a community about seven miles northwest of Jerusalem. These two disciples had seen everything that had happened in Jerusalem, and they're trying to figure out what it means. Verse 14. Together they were discussing everything that had taken place. Now, do you remember some of the things that had taken place that week? Jesus had entered Jerusalem as the promised Messiah, as the people laid their coats and palm branches in the road in front of him. That week, Jesus went into the temple and drove out all the money makers. That week, Jesus taught in the temple about future events and what we could expect. He had washed the disciples' feet. And then he was arrested, tried, and crucified. Together they were discussing everything that had taken place. They had seen Jesus die on the cross. And they didn't understand why that had to happen. Their understanding of the Messiah was that he would conquer Rome and set the Jewish people free from their oppressors. The cross was not part of their plan. But if they had only listened to the teachings of Jesus and paid attention to the prophecy in Scripture, then they would understand. And while they were discussing and arguing, now you can tell these were church people. You know why? (laughs) They were arguing. Church people like to argue. Now, I don't do social media. You need to pray for me. But I hear that church people love to argue on social media. Is that true? Those of you that have it. I know you don't do that. But when was the last time that you argued your theological view on social media and someone replied, oh, okay, now I see it. You are right and I'm wrong. When's the last time that happened? I'll tell you when. Never. So why do we argue on social media? Verse 15. And while they were discussing and arguing, Jesus himself came near and began to walk along with them. You see, Jesus appeared. He didn't just come walking up. He appeared. Beam me up, Scotty. Jesus was beamed up To the Emmaus Road. Now you would think that would get their attention. But they were too wrapped up in their argument. Verse 16. But they were prevented from recognizing him. Jesus is now in his resurrected glorified body. But he's still recognizable. And we're not told why they could not recognize him. But I do know this. Jesus was the last person they expected to see. They knew he had been put to death. And they believed someone had stolen his body. Verse 17. Then he asked them, Why is this dispute that you're having with each other as you're walking? 
And they stopped walking and looked discouraged. That question from Jesus blew their mind. It disturbed them so much that they stopped in their tracks. They couldn't believe that this person did not know about everything that had been happening. Verse 18. The one named Cleopas answered him. Are you the only visitor in Jerusalem who doesn't know the things that have happened there in these days? How is it possible that someone could not have heard this news? It was the talk of the town. Everyone knew except this guy. And the truth is, if anyone knew what was going on, it was Jesus. Verse 19. What things? He asked them. Now, I believe this is Jesus' sense of humor. That Jesus enjoyed sharing funny stories with his friends. I just believe that. I think Jesus would be a fan of the skit guys and Sinbad. And we can see some of Jesus' sense of humor in this story. Here is Jesus, who was at the center of everything that had happened in Jerusalem that week. And he messes with these disciples by asking them, What things? Jesus told the people over and over and over again exactly what they what would happen, but they still didn't get it. And apparently no one was listening. And Jesus is so patient with us as he allows us to tell him things that he already knows. The scriptures encourage us to all come boldly before him and to share with him the concerns of our heart. He loves us and he wants to help us and Jesus wants to answer our questions and sometimes he even makes us laugh. Did you know this is one of the core values at Argyle? We will have fun and laugh often. We need to do that more. Serving God with those you love is a blast. Verse 19. What things, he asked them. So they said to him, the things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, powerful in action and speech before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we were hoping That he was the one about to redeem Israel. Besides all this. It's the third day since these things happened. Moreover, some women from our group astounded us. They arrived early at the tomb. And when they didn't find his body. They came and reported that they had seen a vision of angels. Who said he was alive. Some of those who were with us. Went to the tomb. And found it just as the women had said. But they didn't see him. See the disciples knew all of the facts of the gospel. But they did not know the face of the gospel. They were able to talk about the ministry of Jesus. They had all the knowledge in their head. But they were missing the truth by 18 inches. 18 inches is the distance from our head to our heart. The problem is not we don't know what we need to know. There are Bible studies and resources online all over the place. Our problem is not a lack of knowledge. Our problem is a spiritual problem. Our problem is a heart problem. Verse 25. He said to them, How foolish you are. Did you know that the word foolish means stupid? Now, of course, Jesus would never tell us that we are stupid. I can remember when our girls were little and telling us that one of their friends had said the S word. Now, the S word at our house was stupid. You could never call anyone stupid. That was a bad word. So Jesus is not calling us stupid. But he will tell us. 
when we are foolish. And we're foolish when we refuse to believe the truth. We're foolish when we insist on doing things our way instead of God's way. We're foolish when we refuse to allow the truth to change us from the inside out. He said to them, How foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. And they refused to believe and refused to understand what the scripture said about the Messiah. Yes, the Messiah will be the king. But the Messiah must first suffer as a servant. And they did not like that part. Verse 26, Jesus said, Wasn't it necessary for the Messiah to suffer these things and enter into his glory? So what is necessary? It was necessary because God said this is how it's going to happen. It's not necessary for all of us to be able to logically explain all the things of God. But it is necessary that we believe the scripture by faith. Jesus said over and over again, have you not Read. And then Jesus begins the greatest Bible study ever taught. Now, some of you think you've been to some good Bible studies, but you've never been to one like this one. Verse 27 Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted for them the things concerning himself in all the scriptures Jesus is telling us that all of the scriptures are about him they're not about us and we cannot properly understand the scriptures until we understand how the scriptures connect to the life and to the death and to the resurrection of Jesus verse 28 they came near the village where they were going And he gave the impression that he was going farther. But they urged him, stay with us. Because it's almost evening and now the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. I can remember when uh, visiting Donna's home in Rome, Georgia. Many times when Donna's father would bring home a homeless person with him to their house. And they would eat dinner with the family. And then they'd spend the night at the house. And he did that all the time. Am I lying, baby? These disciples also took a stranger into their home. Verse 30. It was as he reclined at the table with them that he took the bread Blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And then their eyes were opened and they recognized him. But he disappeared from their sight. And we're not told how their eyes were opened. Maybe when they heard him pray, they recognized that prayer that they had heard so many times. Maybe they saw the nail scars in his hands. All we know for sure is that their eyes were opened. And not only did they recognize Jesus, but for the first time they understood the gospel. That Jesus came to be our Savior. That Jesus died on the cross for our sin. And he rose again from the dead. And as soon as they recognized Jesus, he beamed up to somewhere else. Did you know scripture teaches that in eternity we will have a body like the resurrected Jesus? You know what that means? That means we can do some beaming up too. And that's going to be awesome. Verse 32. They said to each other, weren't our hearts burning within us while he was talking with us on the road 
and explaining the scriptures to us. Instead of being blown away by Jesus' beaming up ability, they were blown away by the truth and the power of the word of God. And that's what the truth does. It will burn in our heart. And the truth brings real life change through Jesus from the inside out. You say you know the truth. The truth will change you. So what's our bottom line today? These two disciples had the story all messed up. We need to get the story right. So what has Jesus taught us? The facts must be first. And then our faith. And our feelings last. The facts are the truth of the inspired word of God. Our faith must be founded on those facts. And then our feelings, our personal experiences, must be based on the facts of Scripture and our faith in God. So today, just like these two disciples did, will you open your eyes and open your heart to the facts to the truth of Scripture. And Scripture tells us that today, Jesus is alive. Let's pray.